me to kill everybody in this room? <laughs> In the little town of Wilder Lived an old man and his lovely little daughter They ran gambling for a living It was the best place around All the men would come and lay their money down Her daddy was... So it's two days before we leave for Bobby Mackey's um, what are you what are you expecting to come across? Well, um, I'm actually kind of expecting a lot of things. I'm actually outside right now, just kind of clearing my head, getting a little focused on the investigation itself, and just mentally prepping for everything. So I'm really hoping to document mainly some EVPs, some phenomenal EVPs. Um, I think it's some of the greatest footage that people can get when it comes to documenting the paranormal. as well as a lot of screams. Like I really want people to experience some type of fear. I just want them to be able to personally go home with something and literally be able to explain their story for what they experienced, what they heard, on top of possibly an apparition. I know those are really hard to kind of come by, but I think that would also just match up with a great EVP, especially if someone had an experience of something you know, fearful, and then we can just bring it all together and catch an EVP, get the apparition, and that's why they were scared. So those are kind of the three main things I'm going to focus on during the investigation. And then also while I'm out here kind of just walking, I actually was studying up on some facts actually about Bobby Mackey's, which was pretty interesting because there's so many theories and he said, she said stories when it comes to Bobby Mackey's, but according to a lot of content that's actually dated, that's in books, that a lot of people actually do not talk about these, especially on other TV shows that have filmed at Bobby Mackey's, YouTube videos. Basically, everybody that's been at Bobby Mackey's has never even brought any of this stuff up. So, I mean, since you're out here right now and you know, I have it in my hand, I guess I'm gonna read some of it to you. I've been highlighting a lot of the areas that I wanted to focus on. And really, some of this just states that, like, the legends of the murderers who murdered Johanna, who, committed suicide supposedly uh, by poisoning herself in the 50s after her father murdered her lover Robert Randall which was a singer at the nightclub and he hung himself in the dressing well he was hung in the dressing room by Johanna's father so that's one of the legends of course and it was saying that it was you know the claims were murdered they were like Satanists who cursed the location and vowed everyone to haunt it and just, you know, a lot of legends, and he said, she said, with Satanist, demonic stuff. And then, you know, then I skip down to Pearl Bryant, where it talks about how there's no connection between Bobby Mackey's and Pearl Bryant ever being established. So when I saw that, I just kept kind of skimming through, and I don't know if you can see here that much, but literally a lot of this stuff is highlighted. There's even, you know, there's little maps here that are all diagrammed out, and if I keep going, and you can see what it was actually before Bobby Mackey. So I'll actually get into that real quick about Pearl. Um, you know, it was really just a distillery before it was Bobby Mackey's. And I can give you a little history real quick about that. It says Pearl Bryant was pregnant with Scott Jackson's baby. She wanted to get married and he tricked her into coming to Cincinnati from Greencastle, Indiana. When she arrived, he and Alonzo Walling murdered her. And because they were members of a satanic cult, they beheaded her and threw her head down a well located in the basement of an abandoned slaughterhouse as a blood sacrifice. Now, that's the story about that, but here's what doesn't make sense about that story. It was actually a distillery during that time period where Pearl was decapitated in her head. So being that it was a distillery, it really couldn't have, it, it, it makes no sense for it to be a blood sacrifice inside of a place where it was a slaughterhouse. And again, guys, these are all facts. Literally, you can, you can read these books, all facts. 
And I just want to read something else to you more, you know, about Pearl. There's so much of it here. Um, here's one of the things that I know a lot of people are really um, educated on when it comes to Bobby Mackey's about the well. There's actually three wells that were in the area and they drained into this, these tunnels that went out into the lake. Now, story has it that these were tunnels where the blood actually was draining out into the water and whatnot. But really, and again, it's written right here, I'm reading it word for word. It says, in 1876, Robertson applied for and obtained permission to dig three tunnels under the railroad from the distillery to the nearby Licking River, which is actually, Bobby Mackey's is here. There is a railroad track right behind Bobby Mackey. So what it's saying is that there's a river literally right on the other side of that, which if any of you guys know Bobby Mackey's and have seen the TV shows and seen YouTube videos, you'll know that there is a river because many people have gone to that river. So these tunnels were used to pump water in, again, right there, to pump water into the structure for the distilling process. So what's that? what that's saying is these tunnels were here. That means they were pumping water from the lake up into the location which now stands Bobby Mackey's. So it's not stating that anything was draining out. It was all coming in. So all three of these tunnels are still in existence and one of them is what has been deemed Hell's Gate and Well to Hell, which is in um, quotation marks. Now here's the other part, the highlighted part that I did. It's ironic that the water was actually flowing from the river into the building rather than the commonly told story that the slaughterhouse waste was pumped from the building into the river. And that's where a lot of this he said, she said storytelling comes into play where people think everything's such a demonic sacrifice within the building. So let me just keep going real quick for you guys. Um, Ah, perfect. This is one that I really wanted to read. You remember about Pearl, how she was decapitated in the slaughterhouse. They buried her head in the well. Here's actually a really good part. And again, if you kind of come closer, again, this is just Ken Kentucky District. Here's everything about Kentucky. Here's the, the turnpike. There's another turnpike. And here's the river right here, okay? So here's the river. I can't tell you where the distillery is in this, but the river is a long thing separating everything. Now let me read to you what is highlighted here. In combination with the fact that the distillery was in full operation when Pearl was murdered, we can safely say that neither Pearl's head nor any other part of her was disposed there. Which means she was never found even when Bobby Mackey's existed and a well, you know, the wells were dug up. So what it's indicating right now is Pearl had zero existence to do with the location of where Bobby Mackey's is. So I'm going to keep reading. In addition, accounts by the witnesses at the hanging make no mention of Alonzo Walling giving the crowd the evil eye, nor Scott Jackson ever uttering threats that he would haunt anybody. Now, story has it with that is, Alonzo Walling supposedly gave everybody the evil eye, just very angry person, apparently, and that Scott Jackson stated that he would, when he dies, he's gonna come back and basically haunt everyone, whoever comes into the facility and has anything to do with whatever. So, that's stating that witnesses actually at the hanging no, noted that that never happened that was never occurred now there's definitely a lot more i'm actually going to read to you this whole entire part right here now guys i'm reading this because it's very important and i believe it's actually going to really help the documentary because there is literally a ton of shows and a ton of other uh, segments out that do not state any of this stuff and i believe it's very important to know the truth that this is literally facts the theories that you hear, nobody's picking up paper. Nobody is literally reading it from books to tell you the truthful things about what happened, nor with the dates. They're literally just doing paranormal, paranormal investigations based off the he said, she said, the rumors, the legends, because as I'm reading this, let's be honest, the, the legends and the rumors of Pearl being decapitated, her head being buried, blood sacrifices, you know, um, demonic rituals that sounds a lot better and more interesting than it being a distillery and it pumping water out and there being no there being no you know identification of anybody ever getting murdered there
So the truth is boring, so I do understand why rumors are easily more followed through with when it comes to the paranormal. But let me let me actually read this whole entire thing to you here. It kind of goes along with what I just stated, how witnesses said that Alonzo Walling um, and Scott Jackson, I believe, never said any of these things, okay? So an eyewitness said Jackson hesitated fully two moments before he replied because somebody asked him during the hanging, do you have any final words? Before he spoke, Walling turned expected, ex all right, that word's misspelled, not me. Evidently believing Jackson would speak the words that would save his life, even while he stood on the brink of death. Walling had half turned around and he stood in that position with an appealing expression on his face, while Jackson, without looking at him, upturned his eyes and replied, I only have this to say, that I am not guilty of the crime for which I am now compelled to pay the penalty of my life. Walling was then asked if he had any comments. He said, nothing, only that you are taking the life of an innocent man and I will call upon God to witness the truth of what I say. Now all of that was actually heard by people. Nothing in that has stated that he's gonna come back and haunt the location whatsoever. Now, right here below that, it says, this is, this is an interesting part to me too, because think about it, back when I just read earlier how it was a satanic ritual for them to decapitate Pearl, bury her head and everything at that location. Newspaper accounts of the day and interviews conducted with witnesses indicate that nothing about Satanists was ever mentioned in conjunction with the Brian case or Bobby Mackey's itself until 2001, when the first of two books focusing on the hauntings there was published. So right there is where the rumors really started back in 2001, because if we really back this up, this murder, I believe, which I could find the dates to, was in the late 1800s. So that's, it makes zero sense for anything to be in that type of way. Um, yeah, in 18, so right here, it actually says in the spring of 1895 is when Pearl met Scott Jackson. So this dates all the way back to 1895, but yet in 2001 is when all of this satanic and Satanist stuff started happening at Bobby Mackey's because of books, because of the he said, she said stuff. So, I mean, I think with all of this, um, paperwork here, if I can actually pull some more out. I believe there's a little bit more. Just right here at the end, guys, it says, but she has no reason to haunt a building where, where neither she nor, okay, let me restate that. But she has no reason to haunt a building where she nor any of her body parts had ever been, a building that is four miles away from where she lost her life. So right there kind of sums it up. Pearl Bryant never stepped foot into a location that was a distillery. Scott or Alonzo never stepped foot into a building that was a distillery. So what they did was they decapitated her, which is actually proven they did decapitate her because she was actually buried with no head, but they decapitated her four miles away. So before Bobby Mackey's ever even existed. So think about this. If they had to have grabbed the head, they would have had to walk in the distillery walk through all of these things, all of this, start digging a hole, put the head in there and bury it without getting caught. Now, now that I mentioned that, there's actually something more interesting that just piqued my attention that I was reading and it had to do with, I believe it was the part where one of them, one of the murders, I can't remember which one it was right now, but I'm gonna find it, ah, right here, okay. I'm just gonna to read to you what I found right here and you can be the judge of kind of what you think it is. From witness testimony concerning the timeline of Scott's activities, which contained, he had a vial, which contained hair and blood stains, Detective Cal Krim was, was of the belief until the day he died, I don't know what that means, that Scott brought the head back from Fort Thomas in the in the, the vial, took it to the dental college and cremated it in the furnace in the cadaver room. 
Back then, dental students worked on dead people and parts of them were sometimes burned in that furnace. So it was certainly hot enough to destroy her head. And this states right here, Pearl's family had to bury her headless and for decades after the murder, people found skulls and were convinced that had at la that they had at last found her head, but none of them were proven to be hers. So, so really, I mean, this all kind of sums it up. She really, like the ending thing says, there's no trail that leads Pearl to being at Bobby Mackey's whatsoever. She did not die there. She never stepped foot in there. Scott or Alonzo never stepped foot in there. And I mean, that kind of really just sums everything up. So other than that, you know, I'm gonna go finish packing. I'm gonna go get everything ready, get the cameras charged up, make sure I got the spirit boxes, make sure I got the Ouija board. And in two days, we're gonna all pack up, head up to Kentucky and really kind of just see what we could find. Kind of, you know, put this stuff maybe to rest, really explain the truth and hope we can gather the information that we're looking for. So focus, the I'm main focused. camera that we're going to be using, right, sure, right, is which one? Back on here, we don't need a light, so we don't need a light source for that one. That's, That's going to be right. daytime, everything, focus, do your little fucking angle shit that you were doing, whatever the fuck you need to do. So Master that right now. So that's... So whatever we practice on, that's the camera that you're going to do it on. These these ones are for night vision only. And you this can is still the carry that here. around and record in case we go up in darker places. But I'm still recording you. Uh, no, right saying? now, no. Right now, she's oh, going to give the tour. She's doing the tour. Remember, I'm, Steven said he's not yes, talking. He's yes, going I with just, us. Yep. Okay. I'm going to be in the uh -huh. crowd with it. This camera right here. Yeah, where's the other camera? This camera right here. The crew getting this their the shit better, together. Okay, this is the better camera we're going to use when we go downstairs. It's not going to have a bracket. It's going to have this one right here. It's going to attach itself to it with this band. You're going to hold it. This camera does not go blurry. It does not go visiony. It doesn't do anything. It's a better camera. We're going to right now. Yes. So the raggedier right footage now, that one. looks more documentary style, this one. So you focus on everything else. You say you're the pro at it. Okay, now is your chance to do that. You do whatever you need to do. What are you doing? I, whatever they tell me to do. <laughs> Just. They told me to hang it. around and hug them. Okay. You ready to go in? Yeah. I guess yeah. we're going to do a tour. Do I need to do anything? Just follow us. Okay. So like I said, this room here is the casino. Um, it looks different with the lights on, but once the lights are out in this room, it's very creepy back here. In fact, we call that back there the creepy corner. Um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, a lot of shadows back there, a lot of banging. I saw what I believe was a full body apparition. This was about a year ago, November. Um, I walked out of the gift shop at the end of a tour. I had two guys that were wandering around the club. I walked out of the gift shop. I waited over here just because it's the creepy corner. And I see a guy leaning on the end of the pool table with his arms crossed like this. I could tell he had on a red t-shirt. Um, I could see he was tall, he was thin, no details really, just that he was tall and thin. And, but it, it didn't even startle me because I knew those guys were in the building somewhere. So I, just, I was going to sit down and wait for them. I took another step and then I heard a noise back in the monster room and I look over and I see both of their flashlights. So I look back and of course he's gone. He didn't hang around to take a picture or anything, but, uh, but I saw him and it, it was the only time I've ever seen, I mean, I've seen shadows, I've seen mist in here, but I've never seen anything that just looks like you, just like a person standing there. The other interesting thing about the creepy corner, um, I've had a lot of people who are sensitive or claim to be psychic mediums who have come on tours, and they believe that on the left side of the pool table, closest to the wall, about where the center uh, pocket is on the pool table, I've had a lot of people tell me that they believe that that is the portal in this building. If you're going to believe there's a portal in the building, they believe it's right over there. And I don't know why, but a lot of people who go over in that area will get a tightness in their chest or sick to their stomach. Personally, a lot of times I'll get a headache like right over my right eye if I stay back there too long. It's just, it's the creepy corner. So, and trust me, when it's dark in here, it's, it's a very creepy corner. So just uh, keep an eye out back there. For stuff. Um, let's walk over here. I'll show you. This room is interesting. You might notice throughout the tour that we broke it up a little bit here and there. Now there's a reasoning behind that. Laura was really kind enough to allow us to actually film the tour 
but we highly recommend that you go and experience it yourself. So at the end of this documentary, we're gonna have a link to where you can visit Bobby Mackey's online and book the tour yourself. The story, in a nutshell, is that Johanna was a singer in the club during the Latin Quarter days. Her father owned the nightclub. She became pregnant. Her boyfriend's name was Robert Randall. He was a singer in the club. Her father did not approve, so he had her boyfriend killed. And then Johanna was so distraught that she poisoned her father and committed suicide. That's briefly the story of Johanna. And as some of you may know, Bobby wrote a song called Johanna, and that, that tells the same story. The popular legend says that they brought her head here, put it down the well with some satanic ritual, and put her head down the well. The only problem with that story is in 1896 the distillery was here. So it's highly unlikely that they actually got in the building with a head and put it down the well. So nobody really knows what happened to her head. It was never found. They did find some random heads here and there back in that time, but none of them were identified as being hers. So that's the story of Pearl. Anybody have any questions or anything? If you want me to cut her head off, can you stop me? Ah! Hey, Ashley. Hey. Okay, so we've been back from Bobby Mackey's for about two weeks now, and I was kind of just wondering if you could explain the incident that occurred in the well where a little bit of commotion kind of started happening during one of the techniques that we were trying out. Well... Liz and I was standing by the stairway to nowhere. Well, Liz was sitting in the chair. I was standing. And you were doing the bit with Christy. You had the razor to her throat, and you told her not to move no matter what. And you start recording. You have it to her throat. All of a sudden, we hear, like, this metal scrape from behind us. Liz jumps up, screams. She, I scream. We run across the room. It was, it was actually pretty terrifying. There was no one behind us. No one was there. Everyone was in front of us. We just kind of stepped back, just watching, observing what you were doing. So what did you feel whenever you heard the noise of the metal scraping? Honestly, I was just scared. It really did scare me. It takes a lot to scare me, and that's one of the times I was legitimately scared. So you, you do believe that. So what you heard, you it, you would say it was what exactly? Honestly, completely. I think it's whatever is down there was making that noise for Christy to lift up real fast. My personal opinion. So to startle the situation, to just startle so startle the situation to make her sit up really fast. Since you had the blade right next to her throat. Hmm. Interesting. Same thing that we did last time, except this time for another trigger object. Can you see me okay with these? Perfect. For a trigger object, just like we did in there with the noose where we picked it up, you know, we're just reenacting things. Pearl Grant, her head was decapitated. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a razor blade next to Chrissy's throat and perform the same type of situation except obviously I'm not going to cut her throat I'm not going to decapitate her but oh, reenact it's unfortunate easy <laughs> and um, we're going to see what we pick up scream, scream when it happens moments like this you realize who your two friends are you have to talk to Pearl so I'm going to put this down in the well Okay. Yep. She's gonna stick her head underneath. I'm gonna put the razor blade to her neck. Don't twitch, no matter what. Like if you hear something scary, don't lift up, obviously. Okay? Yeah. She's gonna be sharp. You feel it? Mm -hmm. If you want me to cut her head off, can you stop me? Ah! Oh! 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 Now that we're back from Bobby Mackey's in Wilder, Kentucky, can you explain to everybody 
what you felt during the razor blade experiment down in the well area. Okay. You asked for a female volunteer because I hadn't experienced anything all night and I'd been wanting to because this was my first investigation with you. Um, I volunteered so to, just to kind of see what happened during the experiment. Um, you were standing in the well. I laid down on the ground and put my head backwards in the well. Um, so you put the blade to my throat and then we just kind of proceeded with the experiment. I remember after the experiment kind of sitting up and seeing what was going on because I, like I said I was lying on the ground and remember um, feeling very lethargic, very tired, not, want, not being able or wanting to necessarily stand up, um, kind of needing help leaving that room once we were done with everything. So what did you experience then from point A to B during the time when you laid down and you were feeling fine, which is why you agreed to doing the experiment, Correct. up until the end of the experiment when you said you were kind of lethargic and not being, you know, kind of needing help up. What happened between that, that point? Okay. Well, like I said, you put the blade to my throat. You had asked um, if you if there was something there, if they wanted you to um, cut my throat or decapitate my head. And then all of a sudden, there was like a loud metal screeching noise. Uh, it sounded like a, a table or chairs had moved. Something um, at the, the foot of, of my body it was very loud. Um, like I said, I was laying on the ground. The chairs um, were on the other side of the room. And then all of a sudden, like I said, you hear, you hear the metal screeching and then everyone starts screaming and running the opposite side of the room. I didn't really know exactly what happened, but that's kind of what happened when you said that. It was immediately after you said, no matter what, you know, you've got the blade to your throat, no matter what, don't move. And the second you finish talking is when the table or the chairs or something, that metal, that metal happened. So it was, it was pretty scary. So I know on the car ride up, you mentioned how um, you were more worried about the aftermath effect, like after the investigation's all done with, you know, the things that can follow you, whatever the case may be with aftermath situations. So did you experience any aftermath effects other than, you know, the time being in Bobby Mackey's, you know, being in the time after the well incident? Did it occur? Did it continue occurring? Not necessarily, you know, uh, a few days later or even the next day, but that whole night, yes. Um, from the moment I, I was, again, laying down, you did the experiment, the second the, the metal screeching noise happened, I sat up and immediately um, felt like the wind was knocked out of me, um, had a hard time standing up. I had to actually get assistance from one of my cameramen that actually helped me up. When you, when you leave Bobby Mackey, you kind of go uphill to the parking lot, couldn't really get uphill. Um, once I got back to the hotel, I just remember um, going to bed almost immediately just because I, I had no energy left. I, I was told later on that I got out of the car and sat on the, on the curb at the hotel, not really remembering any of this, um, but again, just no energy, had to get help off the curb, help up into the hotel room. So yeah, that was a pretty significant um, evening I had. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, <clears throat> do something for me. Walk, walk down this track on, on the top. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Walk slower. Holy shit. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <was> funny. <laughs> Ew. It's starting to smell like... Dead people? Yeah. All right, I have no idea how the fuck we're getting back there. I bet you around this little loop here, there's a way to get back behind these trees. It looks like actually three trees. What about right there? It looks like a pit. If you look straight through there, it looks like it just dropped off. That's, That's what, what I'm it saying. does. Like, get me down here. There's a trail right there. Excuse so me. I can go. I'll let you guys know.
Don't pull me down. <laughs> I was trying to get it on film. I thought it was going to happen. Poison ivy, I'm going to be fucking pissed. You know it's going to happen. Poison ivy is three leaves with little white flowers and it's a wax color. Oh, shit. Okay. Now, oak and sumac are going to be different. Oak is got ragged edges. Ivy doesn't. Sick, dude. Right here. Found it. Look at this. There it is right there. Perfect. We came out to the right spot, guys. First time. We'll hold on to her so she doesn't fall. You me? You guys got each other? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So we found the well the first try. You guys got it? Stop right there. Stop right there. Look at that shot. That's a nice shot. I'll take a photo real quick. <clears throat> I'm going all the way down. Ready? Yeah, we're going all the way down. Where is she at? Are we getting steeper? We're yeah. going all the way down. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's getting steeper. You guys gotta just. This isn't hard, guys. It's hard to do this. And if I fall, what are you guys going to do? Come with me? Just shut up and walk. Oh, be careful. It's going to be very loose right here. Christina, are you good? Okay. You good? Okay. There's nothing I can do on that one. There, is that rock? Just step on that rock. During the editing process where we ventured into the tunnel, we came across something pretty significant that we really couldn't ignore. So what we're going to do for you right now is show you that exact same clip in case you missed it and slow it down for you. Now what you're going to be listening for is right after I ask a question, you're going to hear a reply. Now also notice as soon as that reply is stated, you're also going to notice that the camera flickers. So right now what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you that clip, slow it down in slow motion, and then replay that same entire clip and just resume the documentary. Hold on. That's a fucking room up there, dude. Turn that brighter light off. Ew. Let's go on. Alright, we gotta go to the battery tonight and go. What are you talking about, battery? Never mind. Oh. What is that? There's some movement in there, but good go. Be careful. careful, it's very slippery. Alright, let's do a spirit box session. Dude. Yep. Alright, hold on. No. If there's anybody that's alive in there, understand. If you come out at me, I'm going to fuck you up. No, it's not on camera. It's not on camera. I can edit that out. Just 
Just go home when he's up there. Oh my god. Yep. Trip all the water because he's Oh, there's a lot of water up here. You see it? Oh, dude, this is creepy as shit. Watch your head. And also, shine that light back here. We can't see fucking anything. Christina, do you have another light? Just the light part? All right, can you no, see? No, I gave it to the Okay, can I can see, see it now. Yeah, keep... Stay low. It kind of gets lower here. Because it turns up. Got it. Fuck. Oh my god, this is light. Come on, Steven, you can do it. <laughs> uh, I did glutes today, too. That shit hurts. Good thing I've had two kids. You guys got it? Wait, where's the light? Shine that light back. <laughs> oh, my, my back hurts the song. Okay. Alright. Chris, you've got what you're doing in, but that's okay. Alright, we're in. Go faster. I'm walking on my back. Oh, look at this, guys. Oh, shit. All right, I think this is the beginning of the actual well. Woo! Wow. What is this? There's no one here out there. We're still outside. Whew. Here's the next, here's the next entrance. This one's going to be creepier. There's spider webs everywhere. Mad fucking spiders, dude. Give me a rock. Shit, dude, it's too far. I'm gonna throw this down there. Shine that light down there. They kept bouncing off of something. Alright, we're dark. We're deep enough. Let's go to the spare box session. There's no way they're going to get out of here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. Alright. Back over here. Can we get through with like a real investigation? Kind of deal. Alright, so it's daytime. You can see up here. We're right above, we're still outside, but we just crawled through this tunnel. Um, and we're headed, we're headed, we're gonna head through this next tunnel that you just saw, which we believe goes to the well inside Bobby Mackey. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a spare box session halfway through the well. And again, we're just outside right now, we're not under Bobby Mackey yet. Are there any entities down here? That well, you gotta get closer with this. This so. This I know. Little, that evil just comes up through this into Bobby Mackey. Wonder if it has a ladder in here. Yeah, bro. That wasn't a fucking car. That would have kept going. What was that? I heard a growl. It wasn't a growl, was it? Yeah, it was, dude. I heard a growl. Fucking shine that thing down there. Shh. Don't be quiet. Can you do that again on the count of three? If that is something. One. Two. If a car just went by, we would have heard that same noise if that was a car. You see how, yeah, you see how long that car ride was going over? <gasps> that was fucking zombies, dude. Alright, let's do this here. Can you all cut them? Can you shine down there? Yeah, okay. While we do this, I'm going to get close again. I'm going to put this right next to the camera, but underneath it. If there's something in that well, can you come out here and speak to us? Charge us. Our 
pull us in. You could hear the cars passing by and they're not making that noise at all. Just peek your head out of that darkness. If you do, I promise all four of us will walk back there and you can take a little bit of our soul to enter into your world. Just pull, show us something and we'll come back there to you. Oh no, that's the real one right there, buddy. All right, now we're at the real well. That's the fucking. This oh, is turning into dude, we're in it right now. Is this it? Yeah, bro, this is it. Steven, go ahead. Where's it dripping? Oh, it's just, just dripping, dripping up against the wall. Oh, yep, yeah, this is it. All right, I'm this gonna get, is it, I'm gonna get in there real quick. Go ahead. Dude, turn it up, turn it up. Well, I'm there. I right, will. I just want to get hit. Oh, this isn't it. This is a sewer. Oh, so we're in the room. Come on, we gotta go stretch out. Oh! Watch out with that. Watch out for this stick. Alright, let's all get in here. Watch out for the water. There's another well here. This is... Can you see? It's very... How you think, guys? Oh, Alright, bats start flying, don't fucking freak out. Don't freak out, you're gonna get hurt. Seriously, don't fucking do anything stupid. Nothing wrong with that. It's not about the bats, it's that they come flying out, you're gonna get scared. We're gonna get hurt, I don't wanna get hurt. Alright, this is fucking it right here. This, can you see okay on the camera? Yeah, it's turn. Alright, let me talk to the camera real quick. Yeah. There's only enough room for Just hold the camera. Alright, so the well he just showed. So we just crawled through two well, two, two well areas. What you just seen above is obviously a sewer. We're all out of breath. Literally, this is up the hill. We're, look, at, look at this circle we're in. We're literally all tucked in this tiny little sewer drainage. The noise you hear is coming from the walls. Um, there's another tunnel. Wait, we were our feet. Another tunnel we're going to crawl to, which I think we're in the road now. So this is going to turn and go into Mackey's. Let's try another spirit box session real quick. Want to get in this one? Yeah, then we'll go on that one. So this is claimed to be, if we're headed to Mackey's, a very dark tunnel, demonic-wise. If, if so, can you just tell us, or even if there's good spirits, any type of spirits? Joanna? Pearl? Could you tell us if we're headed in the right direction to Mackey's?
either way, we're going to keep heading this way. If you would just tell us a yes or no, it would help. So all you guys know at home, this is how dark it is in here. Without our infrared on. Alright, so we're not getting a reply. Which shows, it, it's not a good thing, not a bad thing. All that's showing is that when we do get a reply, it's going to be something paranormal. Otherwise, we'd be picking up numerous radio stations. What was that? What was that? Actually, I just heard a voice. Like an actual voice, voice, voice. It was a female voice. It wasn't on that. Alright, so what we're going to do, I'm going to ask one more time. Should we walk through this tunnel? Turn this on. Digital voice recorder. How did you do that? Are you breathing heavy? Are you I doing anything? Heavy. If you do, just say it. We have to know. So I'm going to hit record. I'm going to ask a couple questions, 20 seconds worth. We're going to play it back and see if we hear anything but my voice. It's recording now. The sound that you hear is just water dropping. That's Blake moving. If there are any spirits, good, bad, any type of non-human entities, anything, can you come to where we are, my voice, and say something? Can you tell us if we're headed in the right direction or not? I don't know. You guys hear something? I mean, I hear something. Did you hear it? Yeah. What I, that's what I thought I heard. Okay. I heard the car. I heard the car. Turn this bright light back on. Try that one more time, bro. Turn that light oh. back on. It's recording now. You ignore the car. You listen to the car. You always take your spirits. Ignore the car. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it one more time. Turn that light back on. I knew I heard, yeah. It's awesome. Recording now. All right. We're going to let it play one more time. And you're gonna hear it. It's right after the car. Can you tell us if we're headed in the Listen. right direction or not? Uh, 
file C-56. C-56? C-56. So it said, yeah, you literally could hear it yeah. say something and nobody said It was anything. like a whisper. So, yeah. And we're, you're not hearing that shit from up there. Fuck no. We are definitely not things down here. Well. All right. Cool. So because of that, we're going to try one more spirit box session. We're just going to go for it. In the, in the other tunnel, see what happens. It's quiet, so we're going to have to listen. We heard you say, yeah, in a whisper. Can you say that again, if we're headed in the right direction? You can use any bit of our energy, just not the camera's energy. We need that in order to validate what you're saying so we know where we're going. Simple yes or no. I'm going to I'm going to give about 10 more seconds. Are we going in the right direction? Yes or no? Nobody heard that? I heard it, but I don't know. It didn't even sound like it came through the spirit box. Oh. But you heard you heard something that, that yes, didn't sound I like it cut off the static. It literally just said it. it. Yeah, it didn't sound like it was on the spirit box. Whoa. Yeah, I saw something. Right? Yeah. I was actually just about to say I'm really cold and I can feel something right when you jerk. Yeah, my, cold. my ankles now. got really cold yeah, from my knees down. down. Like, yeah, massive goosebumps everywhere. All right, let's do this if we're going to do it. You can see us going into tunnel number three, and then in the next clip, you're going to see us coming out of tunnel number three. What I wanted to explain is why we didn't film within the tunnel, mainly because of all the equipment we had, and due to how small the tunnel was, it was extremely flooded, so we just didn't really want to risk damaging the equipment. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Let me see the camera. Ah. All right. Turn. Can you turn off that light? Yeah. I want to see how dark it is without. Just turn your phone off or something. Oh. What are you doing? She's trying to turn your phone off. Oh, so we could still see even with. Yeah. So it's so dark in here, we don't even need the excess light. Mm -hmm. source. Can you turn off, can you turn off that extra, this extra light? Turn off the IR light. What do you see now? Pitch good. Show everybody what we actually see. So that, if we turned off this screen right here, the only thing lighting it up, why I can see Chrissy, why I can see Blake, is because of this screen. But what you see is pitch black. There's nothing in here. Oh, God, I don't care if you turn that in. I'm out of breath. I know, my ears are like... My legs are about to give up. All right. You guys ready? The sooner we get out of here, the sooner we can get some fresh air. Breathe. Check it out of the way. I'll need a fucking way. I'll show you how to go, this motherfucker. There's only one way. Out, come on. You want me to go? Sir? Just somebody go. We can get out of here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. What's that say? No, enter, and then you have the, here. Do not enter. Do not enter. Enter. And then you have the pentagram, I think that is. With anarchy in the middle. And more over here. Look. Behind you. Leave out. Alright. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, guys. Over this adventure. How do we not see that we're going in? Oh, dude. We need to be careful. That's not like slippery and it's downhill. It don't even matter who goes first. There's no like. 
Come on, please. Go between. Don't fucking drop the camera. It's not going nowhere. It's like we're fucking crawling out of the devil's throat, dude. Look at all the veins and shit. For the body, that looks like. Yeah. Alright, so we just climbed straight through Go to pro. a sewer drainage. Go pro. It's the Sims Park pool. No so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna walk up and we're gonna find yeah, where that sewer place. drainage was. And uh we're gonna go from that sewer drainage and then we're gonna follow it to the right and kinda see at least somewhat where it might have been. Alright, let's do this. The place we're going. Like even in the well, there was a growl. We, everybody there heard a growl. Like it literally, it got dark. Like it got dark, and people were like, they growled. It was fucking insane. That was the first time I ever heard a demonic type growl because they're supposed to, you know, to growl. They're demonic. But where the fuck did it come from? It started right in the middle of our circle by the well and carried out right past me. And everybody around it heard. We were like, we fucking heard that travel. Wow. It was pretty cool. Um. It was cool or it was scary. <laughs> it was it was cool. It was cool shit. Like adrenaline rushing cool. Yeah. And then two other girls cried and they left. Really? Because they couldn't take it. And yeah, it was no, it was pretty cool. But then after I left, a few did it was it was really weird afterwards. That whole attachment thing is a real thing. So and I think that's what I'm more nervous about more than anything. It's the aftermath. Yeah. And none of this. I don't. I didn't have any of the equipment. I had this. Time. I didn't have. My, I had nothing. I literally had no piece of equipment except the spirit box. So this time we got the Ouija board, a noose, blood, gun, everything. A what? We have the Ouija board and what? Blood. A noose. A noose. A noose. A noose. What's a what's a noose? That, where the when okay, did, you gotta cut that when out. When did we <laughs> edit? Yeah, <laughs> edit. Chopped. What, what's a noose? What's a noose? It's a, where they hung people. That they like hung witches and shit during. It's back there. Grab the noose. Since when? I, I didn't know we were bringing a noose. I made the noose. Can you see it? Or it's like rope. Because I said, hey. Stop. Oh. Shit. See? I made it. Let me see that. Do What's something. on it? Blood. Real blood? Fake blood. See? It actually works. You go like this. And then you go. You plan on using that? Yeah. One of the one, someone hung themselves in one of the dressing rooms, so I'm gonna put this around my neck. And I don't remember us talking about that. That was Jewel. No, that was Johanna. Jo her name is Jewel. Jewel? Yeah, that's what they called her. Her father called her Jewel. Yeah, because her father got what, killed one of the people because da da da. He, she killed that. She killed him. Got him killed. Basically, yeah, it she was. She, well, the the the, the so basically Johanna? the story goes as that she fell in love with a man there, and uh, her father was a gangster and he actually owned the place, and. Uh, what happened was her, her father had the man killed and uh, she was so depressed by it, she killed herself in the dressing room. The dressing room actually is over, standing over the actual um, wells themselves. Like the dressing room was a stage and the, and the bottom room where we're gonna be going into was the actual dressing room for the uh, entertainers. Yeah, there's three dressing rooms. And there's three of them? Yeah. That's pretty they all, cool. They all have creepy different lights in them too. Like I can't remember the colors of the lights, but it's really, it's creepy down there. Like you'll see when we get down there. And um, oh, it's fucking really creepy down there. I'm excited. It's mad dark too. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm going to be able to see your own hand in front of you. So have you ever like felt the energy coming out of that thing? I mean, have you ever been, have you, have you been to the actual wells themselves and actually like, touched them, seen them? There's them? only one well that you can see. So the other one's been exposed? Yeah, you can't see it. The yeah. well that's, the, the well that, this well that's dug up is the main well that um, the caretaker was saying that he had a woman in white or this woman kept... What's the kept caretaker's hearing, name again? I can't. Carl. 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 And he kept hearing, a woman kept coming to him saying, go dig in the well, go dig down here. Like, there was no well at one point. Found yeah, out he, where he to totally. go. And when you see, like, where his room was to where this well is, you don't just randomly 
pick this fucking spot. Like something had to tell him where to go. Cause you gotta leave the bar, go downstairs and around. You gotta walk and go to like two other different weird rooms and then no, dig. there'd be no way he would have just randomly like let me dig this yeah. and find a head and find this and find that. Like there's no way it would happen. So it's really it's really cool. But we'll find out. It okay. looks it looks good with the blue light on too. Okay, so what we're doing is these are three dressing rooms and a man supposedly hung himself in one of these dressing rooms. We don't know which one. He didn't need money low. We're going to pick the first one because mainly because it has a door. We could close the door and that's obviously the only reason why. So instead of actually hanging myself because these beams up here, they're not going to support my weight. I'm going to put the noose inside of my neck. I'm going to tighten it. We're going to put the spirit box on. Um... Brad has his digital voice recorder. You have it on you? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to let that scan. We're going to play back exactly what we hear. I'm also going to have mine recording as well. Hold that down. I'm going to put the noose around my neck. Just reenacting exactly what occurred, possibly, in this dressing room. And if not, somebody did die here from a hanging. So the point is, this did happen before here. Just maybe not this room in general. Someone flip out that light. So I'm gonna put it around my neck. Everyone still see? Huh? Yeah. With your camera, can everyone still see? Yes. I got We're golden. Good. Keep going, Ray. Do you know what I'm doing right now? If you can see exactly what I'm doing, what am I doing? Come in here and save me. Can you cut the rope? Pull the rope down. Or do you want me to die just like you died? Do you want me to kill everybody in this room? us right now? It's a yes or no. Simple question. Can you come in here so you can see us? Can you make one of us sick within the next few days to try to bring us as close as to your world as possible. Thank you. 
So you can hear it scanning. That's definitely not the spare box. Go back, dude. That was that just Oh, he said it. He said. It. No, I, I heard the breathing. Like that. What the fuck was that? Okay. That's like the, the first thing tonight. Hey. Can we hear it again? Wait, wait, wait. One more so, time. So, yeah, no, no. Did I Hey Brad. Hey Steven, how's it going? Pretty well. How's it? Uh, how's it going with you? Ah, uh, not too bad. Sweet. So, I'm gonna make this quick because I know you're busy and um, I have a lot going on. So, I'm just calling to kind of get your interpretation on what happened during the Conjuring Mackey's event at Bobby Mackey's. We've been back for a couple weeks now and wanted to know what you thought and how you felt during the situation in the dressing room where we tried the experiment with the noose around my neck and an EVP session. Um, I mean, it was definitely a, a different experience. Um, I, I, we got a reaction out. I wasn't really expecting. Um, we got a, I, what I would consider a class A EVP. Um, uh, and, and I think it was related to the reenactment event that you were actually doing. Um, I, was, I was pretty blown away by the EVP that we got. So how did you feel mentally or, you know, emotionally whenever you heard this EVP? Um, you know, it kind of made me feel like we got to, uh, 
maybe some type of answer from what may have happened down in the dressing room of Bobby Mackey's. Now you can oh, you can I, see it when it's blue. Yeah, now I got you back. Yeah, bring that whole thing back, dude. Yeah, can we listen back to when it said um, it's in a different Here. room or whatever it said? It's, yeah. Hold this. I want to hear what they're hearing. Okay. Okay. Is it saying it says it's another room? It's another room, but he's asking something else. I want to hear what he says. I feel like he said person. It's, it's, another, another, person. Person. it's, it's another, another person. person. It's another person. It's another person. I hear person. In that room. It's another person. Let me slow it down. Who's that? It's, it's another, another person. person. <laughs> but what were you asking it? Is did someone hang themselves here? Oh, it's another person, so it's not that person. It's not them. something right there or after the way you died I want to hear what it sounds like when it's after it says do you want me to kill everybody in this room Something said shit in there. You all yeah. did not hear that it. Was said that was somebody screaming into it. Yeah, dude. no, we were really quiet. Let me go back to that. Can you hear this with this? Is everything... What? Something... Yeah. I want to hear what it sounds like when it's after it says, do you want me to kill everybody in this room? Something said shit in there. You all did not hear that. Was that was nobody said that. Screaming into it. Yeah, we were really quiet. Let me go back to that. Can you hear this with this? Is everything. Yeah. Something said shit in there. You all yeah. did not hear that it. Was that was somebody screaming that. into it. Yeah, no, we were really quiet. Let me go back to that. Can you hear this with this? Is everything... What? Something, like, something walked up to... Like, it sounded like something was fucking with it. I can't make it out. It's like it walked up and it's like screamed it up into like, it. Almost like, yeah. Whoa. What was that? What was that? that was... Was that when you took the noose off? Oh, oh, he struggled for a second. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, was the noose. Like, can you take it off? It took you a second. <laughs> like, on video, it took you a second. <laughs> Wow. Something what when I, after I said that then I was something almost like it was something like, it, like screamed it, into it, dude. It's another person. 
So the person, let's continue. You gotta Dude, that was, one, that was one of the no, best I mean, things I've gotten. Yeah. That was good. That was a good one. Hey. Jeez. <laughs> that was good. You know what? Let's see how good I can get this lighting right here. Do you believe? I never did believe. I just I wanted know, to I mean, see like, Did you believe in that you heard that right? Oh no, I definitely heard something. Dude, that, it was it was there. That, that was, was crazy. Out of everything that another person. Tonight, person. That was the one thing. We were all quiet. We he asked a question and there was a solid answer. Like and you I can't have it all recording here, which then I can also <laughs> enhance it more once we put it in USB. And the good thing about that is we got it on video. That's sitting over there. And you can see it sitting there. Oh, this is been running the whole time. So we could split screen, show yeah. it, and really enhance it all and be like you didn't hear it on video, but you heard it on this. Like, yeah. Like, those are the different frequency levels that yeah. prove it's paranormal. Like I said, this yeah, recorder that. records at 6.1 hertz. Most recorders, almost every recorder records at 8 hertz. And I, I may be wrong, but I think the human ear is 10 hertz. So this is way below frequency level. Exactly. We need to invest three grand. In There's a lot of haters against this. Yeah, because they don't have one. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, I was People gonna hate say, what they yeah. don't have, right? All right. They say it's... Uh, I got a little cocky for a second. That's going in the film. <laughs> well, they, what, what their argument is, is, oh, there's too much interference and too much white noise. But when you get a fucking direct response, and you can understand it... That was fucking nuts. Yeah, seriously. What just happened down there? Hey. Ah. <clears throat> I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Shit's fucking scary. We've been back a few weeks now from filming at Bobby Mackey's. So tell me, how do you think it went? Well, I think it went pretty well. Actually, you know, we got some phenomenal EVPs and a lot of screams from people who experienced what they believe to be paranormal. So all in all, you know, I really believe that it was, it was a phenomenal investigation and at the end of the day I think Bobby Mackey was right. I have to tell Stephen right now that if it's if it's anywhere in the world it's got to be here because that's the kind of place that it really is. I deny it but there's a whole lot of people that believe in it and I find that I am in minority and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I don't connect with it but if it's anywhere it's here. You been recording? No. Yeah, half and half. I just stopped. The Ouija board? Falling over. Same one we used last night. You can see it a little bit better. What's all this shit? Fresh blood. Put a lot of blood on it. Ooh, that's me. Then you can see the human ashes down there. And uh, for anybody who wants to sign this or actually put their blood on it, this is an offer that I, that I make for everybody. You want to add your blood to it, Blake still has to do it. You're going to write your name on the back of it so that I know whose blood's on this. There's a, there's, a, there's a theory, a method behind this. It's because whenever I use the board, and for everybody that watches what I do, I put the spirit box on the board. If that spirit box, the entity comes to and happens to stay in name, I like to check to see if that name is here. So if we get this covered up with names and just say it's Ashley and Brad right now, say it says Brad, I'm going to want to see if it actually has Brad's name on here. Now, that's a theory, a paranormal theory based. So that means, did it say Brad because it's picking up the energy? his blood, his part of his soul, his energy, what gets him, that's, that's like the motor oil for a body. So did we just make this board more of a, more of an energy vessel for an entity to speak? So that's the method behind this. Can it pick up somebody else's blood even after five years, a whole new state, a whole new location, and recognize the name of the individual's blood on this board? That is the goal behind it. These are the two names we have so far. Ashley Farmer and Brad Streets. You. Yeah. And then Blake's gonna sign a two because he did add his blood to this as well. Done. Word. Wrap. <laughs> 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 <laughs>